columns in a building refer to vertical structural elements that provide support and stability to the structure they are designed to carry the load of the building and transfer it to the foundation i have already discussed how we can calculate the load on interior column as well as the corner column of a building in this lecture i am going to show you how we can calculate the load on side column of a building we have a building plan containing 12 number of columns numbered from column 1 to column 12 So we have the given data number of stories is 2 floor height is 3 meters the size of primary beam is given as 230 into 300 mm size of secondary beam is 230 into 230 mm and the size of plinth beam is given as 230 into 600 mm since we have to do the calculation for side column that's column 11 the size of column 11 is given as 230 into 400 mm Wall thickness of both the external and the internal walls is 230 mm. Soil bearing capacity is given as 150 kN per meter square. The height of neck column is 1 meter. Neck column is nothing but the height of column from footing top up to the ground level. Plinth height above the ground level is given as 600 mm. The density of RCC is 25 kN per meter cube. Slab thickness of both the roof slab and the floor slab is given as 125 mm. The live load on roof slab is assumed to be 1.5 kN per meter square and the live load on floor slab is 3 kN per meter square. Floor finishing is 1 kN per meter square. Waterproofing load is 0.8 kN per meter square and the thickness of parapet wall is given as 230 mm. It shall be noted that We just need to put the input values in the yellow cells only rest of the values will be calculated automatically now moving to the next step in which we need to calculate the load on roof slab first of all we need to know the thickness of roof slab which is 0.125 meter the self weight of roof slab will be calculated as thickness of roof slab into density of rcc so we got the self weight of roof slab equal to 3.125 kN per meter square Live load on roof slab is assumed to be 1.5 kN per meter square. Floor finishing is 1. Waterproofing load is 0.8. The total load will be summation of self weight plus live load plus floor finishing load plus waterproofing load. And the factored load will be 1.5 times this total load. So we got the factored load of roof slab equal to 9.6375 kN per meter square. Now moving to the next step in which we need to calculate the load on floor slab. The thickness of floor slab is given as 0.125. Self weight is thickness of slab into density of RCC. Live load is 3 kN per meter square in case of floor slab. Floor finishing is 1 kN per meter square and the total will be 7.125 kN per meter square. Again, the factored load will be total load into 1.5. which will be 10.688 kN per meter square moving to the next step in which we need to calculate the load on beams which includes primary beams secondary beams and plinth beams self weight of primary beams will be equal to area of cross section of primary beams which is 230 mm into 300 mm into density of rcc factored self weight will be 1.5 times this self weight of primary beams self weight of secondary beams will be area of cross section of secondary beams into density of rcc area of cross section of secondary beams is given as 230 mm into 230 mm and density of rcc is 25 kN per meter cube factored self weight of secondary beams will be equal to 1.5 times this self weight of secondary beams the self weight of plinth beam will be equal to area of cross section of plinth beam which is 230 mm into 600 mm into density of rcc again the factored self weight of plinth beam will be 1.5 times the self weight of plinth beam now we need to calculate the wall loads the height of external wall is calculated as 2.7 meter which is equal to floor height minus depth of primary beams floor height is given as 3 meter and the depth of primary beams is 300 mm again the height of internal walls will also be equal to 2.7 meter Height of parapet walls is assumed to be 1 meter and the density of brick masonry is 20 kN per meter cube. Self weight of external wall will be equal to thickness of external wall into height of external wall into density of brick masonry. 
thickness of wall is 230 mm height of external wall is 2.7 meter and the density of brick masonry is 20 kN per meter cube the total will be 12.42 kN per meter factored self weight of external wall will be equal to 1.5 times this self weight of external wall again the self weight of internal wall will be equal to self weight of external wall since these walls have the same dimensions factored self weight will be 18.63 and self weight of parapet wall will be equal to thickness of parapet wall that's 230 mm into height of parapet wall which is assumed to be 1 meter into density of brick masonry factored self weight of parapet wall will be 1.5 times this self weight of parapet wall moving to the next step so we have to do the calculation for column 11 which is a side column the length of slab surrounding this column is 4 meters and the width of slab is 3 meters the area of slab will be 12 meters square the length of primary beam surrounding this column is 7 meters which is equal to half the length of b18 plus half the length of b19 plus half the length of b14 the length of secondary beams will be equal to half the length of b13 plus half the length of b15 which will be equal to 6 meters wall length under primary beams will be equal to length of primary beams which is 7 meters and the wall length under secondary beams will be equal to 6 meters parapet wall length will be equal to 4 meters which will be equal to half the length of b18 plus half the length of b19 moving to the next step in which we need to calculate the load transferred on column from each floor first of all let's do the calculation for load transferred from roof to first floor the roof load will be equal to factored load on roof slab into area of slab surrounding column 11 the beam load due to primary beams will be equal to factored self weight of primary beams into length of primary beams surrounding column 11 which is 7 meters again the beam load due to secondary beams will be equal to factored self weight of secondary beams into length of secondary beams wall load due to primary walls will be equal to factored self weight of primary walls into wall length under primary beams which is equal to the length of primary beams that's 7 meters again the wall load due to secondary walls will be equal to factored self weight of secondary walls into wall length under secondary beams finally the total load transferred from roof to first floor will be equal to summation of all these loads which will be equal to 353.61375 kN now let's calculate the load transferred from first floor to the plinth the floor load will be equal to factored load on floor slab into area of slab surrounding column 11 Again the beam load due to primary beams will be equal to 18.11 beam load due to secondary beams is already calculated as 5.95 wall load due to primary beams is 130.41 kN and wall load due to secondary walls is 55.89 kN the total will be summation of all these values which is 338.61375 kN moving to the next step in which we need to calculate the load transferred between plinth beam to footing it shall be noted that there is no wall or secondary beam located between plinth beam and footing the load due to plinth beam will be equal to factored self weight of plinth beam into length of primary beam surrounding column 11 since there is no wall and no secondary beam present between plinth beam and footing therefore the load due to wall and secondary beams will be zero hence the total load will be 36.225 kN total self weight of column will be equal to area of cross section of column into height of column into density of rcc area of cross section of column is given as 230 into 400 mm the height of column will be equal to height of floor into number of stories plus height of plinth beam above the ground level plus height of neck column and the total will be 17.48 kN total load on this column will be equal to summation of all the loads transferred from each floor it shall be noted that for interior columns we should consider an increment of 0 to 10% for side columns 11 to 15% and for corner columns the increment should be 16 to 33% as allowance for bending due to fixity since we are doing the calculations for side column let's assume the increment in load as 15% Therefore the total actual load on this column will be equal to 857.82 kN. Now let's calculate the size of the footing. 
Total axial load on this column is calculated as 857.82 kN. Column working load will be equal to total axial load on column upon factor of safety 1.5 which will be equal to 571.88 kN. The design load of footing will be equal to column working load into factor of safety 1.1. The soil bearing capacity is given as 150 kN per meter square. The required area of footing will be equal to design load of footing upon soil bearing capacity and the total will be 4.19 meter square. Again, the required side of the square footing will be equal to square root of 4.19 which will be equal to 2.05 meter square. Let's provide the side of footing equal to 2.1 meter each. The provided area of footing will be equal to 4.41 meter square and the net soil pressure will be equal to column working load upon area of footing provided. Since the net soil pressure is less than the bearing capacity of soil, therefore the footing size is ok. So this was all about this lecture. If you want the excel sheet of this calculation, you can check out the link in the description box of this video. Thank you.